this will be another Grande Pacific production. This is a video is to address a question they ask about detection uh, on a crossover and how you would go about doing it. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to take the physical setup. I'm going to show you what, what, how I did it and right now what I need to change but uh, this will get you an idea. Uh, right now the engine is sitting in the um, main line on this part of the railroad in what would be called the New River Mine block. Now uh, this is con CP266 control point 266. Uh, that is a uh, name that's given to this switch for switch control purposes and then I carry it into the block name also. Now this block is current this switch if you can see the plastic insert right there is currently gapped. So that side of the switch is separated from this side. If you come down the line, right here, got to find it, sorry, there is the gap for the block on this side. So, and in this case, we have on the back here, right there is the gap for the track in the rear. Now, when we get inside and look at the panel, you'll see this one's in the darker color this is really a switching lead for the mine so it doesn't tie up the main when the switch is in here working so actually that piece of track there is not detected that is the main line and it is detected so this is a separate block this is a block here in the switch in that there's a block on this side and there's a block on this side you can detect this here, 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 and here in the JMRI system and layout editor. Currently, I have it separated across here. So this is detected and this is detected. Now, you come on down the line, one of the things that may or not be agreeable uh, because this could be used for a siding right in here off the main the second track this is this the this switch and this switch are detected it's all part of this side of the crossover so i'm using that whole thing so if there's an engine anywhere from there through here all the way down to here and you'll see here again there's the gap and there's the gap right there and what I'm doing is cutting it with the Dremel tool and placing styrene the styrene has been dipped in super glue before it's shoved in uh, hit it with some kicker let it set for a couple minutes, seconds, take an X-Acto knife and cut it off to fit. Sculpt it so there's no over stick out on the inside. Oh, I didn't paint the rails back there. Oh, well, okay. Anyway, there's the gap on the third one. So, it's just what you feel the operations need and what the dispatcher needs to control and how he's going to control it. As I learned real quick in doing this, and this was the first one I went back and corrected it, you know, it's a live and learn process on, on uh, how much you need to see and when. So let's move in and look at the computer. By our little video out in the other room, this is the piece of track we're looking at. Now, what I'm going to do is move the engine forward I think we're going to reverse uh, and 
we'll see the engine is now sitting on the switch. So it didn't light up the other side of the crossover because that isn't a separate block now. We've isolated the crossover from one side to the other. This very simply allows that switcher to run back and forth on the inside without blocking the main. So if we have the switch in the disable if occupied position, then the two sides can be used and the dispatch will know what's going on individually. So if I keep moving the train in reverse, uh, then you see the train get off the switch and go into the next block. Now let's take the crossover and throw it hit forward and roll the train forward now you see it for the first half of the crossover and then it hit the second half and it's on the other side now and the way that is currently hooked up when he's on that side it occupies all the switches over there now you'd have to be here and it probably raises some questions in my mind if I want to further separate that ladder the one switch down at the bottom but in my mind it doesn't make any difference because anything that's occupied in there is going to follow up, file up that whole area so if it's filed because the switch is in there then there's no need to be throwing any other switches or have anybody in there Okay, so we now see the situation of where we are. Uh, let's back up here, because I don't know. Okay, we'll get the train off that switch. And we'll throw this switch here. Bring him back forward, because I didn't know where he was. I'm not standing in the other room. And we'll uh, roll the engine forward. Now he's out of that and into what would be the siding off the main. Now, going forward, let's take a look at this. So if I uh, right click, you get this group of options. Uh, and you can see right here left hand crossover TO21 turnout yeah, okay TO21 I'm, I'm not sure what that's for but anyway uh, turnout NT266 that's its number right now it's disabled disabled when occupied I'm sorry um, that block is on. I can go here and I clicked on it and you see now the block is checked. So now if this was red it would be disabled when occupied. If I click here the switch is disabled period. Okay I'm gonna click back because I have other reasons for doing that. Now right here you see the four block connections for the uh, crossover the first two are set for the main on one side and the next two are set for the inside setting now if you wanted to catch all four of the points then you could have two more blocks one there and then another one down here at the bottom and have four indications and you kind of saw on a random switch machine over these that only half of the crossover lit up if you split it to we have four inputs here four separate inputs then you're going to get a light here you're going to get a light there a light at the bottom a light here and then a light one only part of the crossover work. so there you go and uh far as it goes I do not currently have signals on the layout yet. Got some of the hardware purchased to do it, but uh, did some further investigation into seeing the actual system I'm going to use in to work this weekend. 
I will be posting a video about merge and the actual pictures of it and how you set it up but anyway this is that's another story so this is your signal set and so forth you can edit right here I clicked at it that went away and up at the top up here and I'm gonna stop and reset the camera up at the top you see the edit box now this is not the way you would do it when you were setting it up but you will see almost the same type of situation you see at the top it gives you the name of NT266 uh, so that's your turnout number and then the blocks associated with the turnout are listed below and you have to enter, enter them and you create you see where it says edit create blocks you get the first one and you see your sensor sensor right there okay then you go down here two three four so you have to keep doing the same thing I'm gonna tell you uh, I don't have a lot of experience with this I've done it a couple of times uh, sometimes it involved almost removing everything and starting over there's a sequence here uh, if you kind of follow it and get it the steps right the first time you'll be okay you get off sequence and it doesn't like it you'll get a lot of you can get conflicts and it's going to come up and I think the the one that drives your bananas is that sense is already in use it believe me you start getting that and you can't get it out the only way you can do it is go back and take the switch out take the the uh, take your entry out clear it uh, close the thing save it close it reopen it and then put it back in and try to get it in in the right order um, I fought through a couple of those but uh, eventually now I kind of pretty much have a feel for how this works and uh, not getting things to be what you say used in two places because it won't let you use them without following the steps you can use the sensor and stuff in more than one place but uh, it's how you put them in hope this helps a little bit if you were going to do it uh, once you have the, the switch installed and I'll go here at the bottom you're not seeing this and I'll click on a single switch this is not a a crossover so you're gonna get the same information when you, once you just set this switch in place then you're gonna get this and you can come in and then you can start changing your blocks and your sensors so that's how you can get four uh, four sensors attached to a crossover so you have to have all of the sensors leading in and all the sensors in it uh, for me on an NCE system this adds up to you could have as many as four sensors connected to the switch and then four sensors in the switch so that's eight BD20s and eight terminals on a 14 terminal AI you now oh one now uh, the JMRI system has got built-in logic in it uh, as far as operating your signals it will assume things or you can tell it to assume things I know one individual who doesn't detect the switch which is at all and he tells the system to wait five seconds when it clears a block that gives the caboose chance to go over the uh, switch and then change the signal to green or yeah flashing yellow whatever so there are ways to think your way through this whole thing but I hope that gives the person who, who wrote the question about uh, how do you uh, detect the, uh, the blocks on a crossover his answer and moving down the road isn't this fun